No, this is not clickbait. Yes, you heard the title right. This is 69 tips and tricks for everything you need to know about Fortnite Chapter 3. I couldn't quite make it to 100, so I decided to condense it down to have really useful tips that any skill level can benefit from. Noobs, beginners, trash players, average players, pros, no matter who it is, these tips are for you. Quick little side note, if you like my sweatshirt throughout any point in time in this video, it's going to be linked down below with my official website. And if you find any of these tips useful, consider using code Kemi's in the item shop. This helps me out a ton. And without further ado, I'm not here to waste any of your time. So let's hop right into this and get it done. This is future Ken Beans. And here's some things that I didn't include in the video. And like I said, this is an all-in-one guide for chapter three. So I'm making it as up to date as humanly possible. I've been scavenging YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Google Plus, Facebook, your sisters, all these different social medias to try and figure out all the things so I don't leave you empty handed. Very quickly, here's all the things I didn't include in tips one through 69. Sergeant Winters is now back in the game. He's throwing presents on a truck with two elves as the driver. Every time you go near him, he's dropping good and apparently bad presents as well, but I haven't seen any bad ones i'm pretty sure it's one present per player but the thing is you can also shoot back at him and he will try and shoot you but he'll drive so fast away that you probably won't kill him chapter one season seven was when sergeant winters was introduced so him being back could mean that planes are kind of being hinted at coming back the shield keg is an item that's going to be sprinkling shields on the floor for a bunch of people that are surrounding it there's a clip in creative about someone using it who got the leak but by the time you're seeing this it could already be in the game i saw in one of cypher's videos that mythic pistols are in the game files like he was talking about these guns are going to be absolutely insane the gold version of this has one of the fastest reload times in the game. I can't even imagine what the mythic one's gonna have. This could potentially be worth running over an MK7. We're not sure yet. If you're not aware, Epic did update creative, so now it has pretty much all the mythic items that we saw in the game. There's no more reload bug with the Stinger SMG. There used to be a thing where it showed it was reloaded, but it wasn't actually reloaded. It would cause a lot of people to die. That's no longer in the game. Screen shakes are no longer in the game. That got removed. If you don't know the bugs I'm talking about, then you didn't play the chapter when it first came out. According to Aussie Antics videos, flare guns and tornadoes should be coming around week six showing now on screen is a clip of how the tornadoes are supposed to look and this is from young go by leaks he's the one that found this this is extremely interesting to see how it's going to be working in real games in case you don't know how flare guns work we've seen this before you shoot them up in the air they explode and they show the enemy's positions in that area hypex tweeted a couple days ago about lightning storms that are going to be coming to the game very soon i believe they're going to be dealing damage to players and as well as setting things on fire the idea is not 100 percent concrete yet because it could be changed by the time it comes out rotating zones now pull further and take longer this is new to chapter three and wasn't like this before. Aussie Antics was mentioning how having height now could potentially be the worst thing to do because you're going to have to build all the way across and you're not going to be able to get too many refreshes. New to this update as of the 17th, chiller grenades, presents, sneaky snowman, snowball launchers are all back in the game. There's also a free skin available in the game right now, but even if you're on Xbox or PS4, you could still get it. Just try and log into some laptop and try and figure it out. There's other videos explaining how to do it in more detail, so go look it up on YouTube if you want that skin. If you see me in this, you know I changed the tip. Let's get into it. The newest phasing technique is to slide into people's boxes just like this. It works on a stair if you don't know already, but the most optimal way of setting this up is by placing a cone in front of their box and then just getting that little momentum boost by sliding right in front of that cone. You get that and you go right in their box, easy kill. In fact, using a cone is going to be way more realistic and having a stair right in front of their box as you're box fighting them is going to be harder to set up. Nonetheless, be aware of both though because you could be in either position. Yeah, if you don't remember me, I'm back already. So grenade launchers are now in the game, like I said, but the cool thing about them is that they've been up updated so that they kind of explode on impact. It's like the old proximity launcher from back in the day, but it's the new form of grenade launcher. Right now for Christmas, it shoots snowballs at people, but it could be changed pretty soon. Also, it's extremely overpowered early game. People run out of mats super fast. You just chuck three of those at their box, they're dead. It's crazy how TikTok has so much useful information. This tip I found from the boy Dilly. So one thing you might not know about these trees that fall down when you shoot them is that when you shoot them and break them down, if there's an enemy nearby, it will go towards that person. Obviously, they probably have to be within a certain distance it's not just going to pinpoint an enemy out of nowhere some things you might not know is that it does 100 damage when it falls down on them but it also does 20 to 40 to 100 damage when it's rolling so seeing how much momentum it has is going to determine how much damage it's going to do you can constantly try and shoot at this thing pickaxe it to break even more builds on structures just like you could see here if this tree would have naturally fall due to gravity it would go to the right but it went up the mountain and took damage on the closest player also because of thirst sprite so once again shout out to him on tiktok Something that he came across was very interesting 
thing when it comes to Tilted Towers. In case you guys don't know, Tilted Towers anniversary, the four year anniversary is on January 18th. Just so happens this is around week seven to week eight, but one of the challenges in week eight states to kill an enemy in Tilted Towers. So in January, it's the four year anniversary of Tilted Towers. They got the challenges coming out in week eight. It's very likely that around that time that the map is gonna be changing a lot and Tilted Towers might not be frozen anymore. The crowd crashes are back in the game and you can't use them like you used to. The thing you guys might not know is that it's not completely patched. Lots of pros and lots of people in general I've seen are literally using it kind of like it used to be. If you're really good at using the quad crashers right now, you'll be able to boost once, maybe twice in the air, depending on how high you are before you boost off the ramps. You can also pair it with the web shooters if you want to go for some crazy looking trick shot, or you can use a very simple strat where you place a stair and then a wall above it and you can kind of get in the air that way. Here's a clip from YouTube I found from Z Quizzy and he was showing a really good way to use the quad crasher. You just bounce off a rock kind of like this, or you could do it with a tree. It's definitely going to take some getting used to bouncing off random things to fly high. But in chapter three, right now at this moment, those are all the ways I know to get in the air with the quad crasher. It's Jerry and left a beautiful tip in my comment section about the best way to use the sliding mechanic after you come out of a glider. Just make sure you hold your crouch button before you land and hit the ground because you'll get some really crazy momentum out of it. I'm a really big fan of this and it's way better than bunny hopping like the old days. If you watch Aussie antics, this is where I found it from. Then you're pretty much aware that Epic is going to be releasing a crazy striker SMG soon. This mythic SMG shoots for 48 headshots and has a magazine size of 30. It has a fire rate of 12 and a reload time of two seconds. Just like Ozzy was saying, this is going to blow the mythic drum gun out of the water and is most definitely the most overpowered gun that Fortnite will ever see. Thanks to Zemi on TikTok, the absolute goat. If you're on TikTok and you watch Fortnite, you're pretty much known. I'm not sure where he learned it from or maybe he found it out himself. He showed one of the best ways to kill the foundation without even him knowing where you are. You just have to find one of these bushes around the POI to hide in as you shoot him and he'll just never see you. You're practically invisible and I'm not sure if this is going to get patched or not, but I would definitely abuse this at the time being. When I tested some of the bushes out, some of them didn't work and some of them did, but honestly, the easiest way to kill the foundation is to make them die from fall damage. Some common knowledge for chapter three. Running straight up on a flat surface and sliding on a flat surface is the same exact speed. When I first started chapter three, I really thought that sliding was going to be faster, but there's really no difference. It's definitely going to be meta to start jumping, sliding, and pairing that with all different sorts of movements so that you're harder to read when someone's sniping you or looking at you. I've already learned the hard way tons of times that if I'm not sliding or doing something weird, I get beamed. Just like there's Sergeant Winter going around on the truck, there's also these two elf skins right here running around on a quad crasher. They roam the map, they roll up to you, throw you a piece of candy, and then they give you their slight. It's kind of funny how they call it that, but they gave me a free ride and I ended up leaving. This is the best way to not be seen as you do a window peek with the MK7. The Ranger AR does not work in this case because it constantly shows the red X. But with the red dot sight, you can peek at this really crazy angle and just not even be seen by the other guy. Be aware though, I know on mobile builds, I'm not sure if high meshes, but I know for a fact on low meshes, meshes. My mod Bob plays on low meshes and he was trying to do this and I constantly was able to shoot him. Granted, it's so small that if I was in a real game, I wouldn't even notice. So when I play the game and I do the peak, I can't be seen because I'm on DX11. Bob is on low meshes trying to do the same peak and he's getting exposed. I learned this from my homie, a rose feared. He has lots of good tips on TikTok. If you know you're about a 50, 50, the best thing to do is to just slide right in their face. Do your best to randomly incorporate sliding into 50, 50 situations because it will help you win. If you want to get used to this, one thing I'd recommend is just when you're in creative build fighting someone, always try to slide as much as possible. Jumping on over to the next tip. If you want to improve your sliding, remember not to hold your movement keys almost at any point in time doing anything. So when you're not holding WASD or your analog stick for movement, you'll be able to slide in a complete 360. This helps you not only one piece control more effectively, but understand which buttons you need to press because you're not doing anything with your movement. The only time you really need to use your movement while sliding is when you're going down a steep elevation or some sort of hills or just sliding down some stairs. Pay close attention. I found out this crazy thing with the reticle as you're sliding. So when you're sliding with guns, preferably we're going to start with the shotgun. Your reticle shrinks just a little bit. When you slide with an AR, your reticle is going to be really, really big. It's going to be huge. When you slide without holding your movement keys, your reticle will shrink a drastic amount. So same thing with the shotgun. If you're not holding movement keys, it shrinks just a little bit. With the SMG, I don't even think it shrinks at all. It just stays the same. It's pretty much a must not to hold your movement keys while sliding, and it's definitely going to help you get more damage in certain 
situations. Not many people are talking about the structures that these new guns do to walls. Compared to Chapter 2, these shotguns, they do way more damage to walls. When it comes to box fighting sweaty players, this is something you definitely want to know because you'll be able to take the wall right away if it's at the correct health. This is the best loot ship and it's the random boat from Chapter 2 of Season 3. It's finally back and it has two henchmen chests, approximately two normal chests, slurp barrels. It has the lunchables with all the stuff inside of it, the slurp barrels, and there's a supply drop that has a 50-50 chance of spawning. Pay attention to the water as you drop because it kind of goes up and down the coastline. Every game is different, but you can always spot it from the battle bus as you're dropping. Hands down, one of the fastest ways to get used to the new shotguns in Chapter 3. I've been using Raiders 1v1 map. The code is going to be on screen right now. You queue in with random people and lots of times I find some very cracked players. Also, Raider, just know if you're watching this, just know I use your maps almost every single time I play the game. So thank you, good sir. Amazing stuff. Speaking of this, Raider came up with this day one of when the sliding mechanic first came out. The old method of stair phasing is just like this. You just crouch up and down and you can get stairs and cones in there. Every person does it like this if you do use this move. Thanks to the beautiful Raider, he showed us a brand new way of going about it and it's actually way more efficient and more effective. You have to make sure that you're looking at the bottom left side of the wall. Keep holding your movement keys forward the entire time and as you slide, it will bump you right against the wall and you'll get the stair or cone in their box. For me, it's definitely going to take some more practice getting used to this, but eventually it's going to be extremely worth because it's way faster than the other method. I really hope I didn't miss anything with these gold crowns. So this is the gold crowns and how they work. You get it by winning a game or killing a player who has it in that game. The crown gives your player a golden glow when you have it and it shows your name in the bottom left when you thank the bus driver, get a kill, or spam pick it up. I believe when you possess one of these, it gives you double XP. If you're looking to get the emote, you have to win a game with the crown first and it adds a plus one every single time you get a win with the crown. One thing about these no one talks about. When a player is close by and possesses the crown, if you look at your compass at the top of your screen, when you see this mark, you will know where they are. This will help you navigate towards the player to go to fight the person with the crown. So if you do hold on to one of these and possess it during the game, expect to get keyed more often. There's a permanent llama that spawns every game near Logjam. Landing at this spot, there's an NPC, there's floor loot, and I believe there's one or maybe two chests. Casuals or competitive modes, it's always there. Throughout the course of the week landing here, I noticed that people will come and key from other spots to get to the llama. So if you land there first, make sure you kill it quick and get out of there. So if you're like me, you might think this is common sense, but even I felt to this the first time I saw these in the game. One of the new items, the guzzle juice, you know how it heals you once you pop it, they ended up buffing it so it now heals you faster. One thing that people tend to screw up on is to pop it in zone. You should never do that because the second you take damage, it instantly goes away and it means nothing. Here's the deal with aim assist to my very own knowledge. I found this from Aussie, by the way, but it did receive a significant nerf by Epic Games and yes, it was intentional. If you felt like your aim was off with the new weapons only, then now you know why. There could very possibly be a buff coming to aim assist in the future after the nerf, but at the moment this video is being released, it is still nerfed. And if I were you a controller player looking to switch the keyboard, I would wait, just like Aussie said, wait like one to two weeks more. So that way you could actually see if they're going to come out with a buff or not. Good luck to all you controller players. Yes, yes, yes. The popular log rotate that lots of people have been talking about. You chop the tree down, you get on top of it, you hit it with your pickaxe and you can move across the water super fast. The more people on top of it, the more people hitting it, the faster it's going to break, but also the faster it's going to go. You never know when you least expect it or just for fun, it can come in handy. I would really like to see someone in a competitive match use this because it would be crazy to see someone rotating with this endgame. A very quick reminder for people who are on their knees all the time. If you're watching this right now, you know that it's you, unless you're watching it on YouTube, because you might see it on TikTok. You can crawl faster than the last chapter, you can use zip lines, you can open up doors and pick up loot and also drop the loot. Every single time you die now and your teammate is nearby, make sure that you are dropping your mats for them. Lots of people have built up this habit to not even talk about it. It needs to be a thing that people need to start doing more. Along the same lines, when you get rebooted, you now spawn in the air, which could be very useful if you get keyed right away, because most of the time when you do reboot, you do get keyed. When I'm trying to key a reboot van, I struggle to sometimes find the player because they're in the air and they fly so far away. Loki, very good at Fortnite to add this. I really do like it. Speaking of rifts in chapter three, there's a few that spawn around the map, but usually I'm almost positive they're always next to the vaults. Not inside the vaults, but around the spot of where the building is. So a little bit more about the sliding mechanic and here's some quick tips that every player should be aware about. Make initiating the sliding faster by turning down the slide hold time in the controller settings. Now, yes, no matter if you're on controller or keyboard, it still affects you. This interface of how this is set up doesn't really make sense and something tells me that it's gonna be a separate setting somewhere else in the near future. So when you tap the crouch button as you're in the air, the second that you hit the ground, you will start sliding. What my boy Jivin TV was talking about, what he started doing in build fights was that every single time he side jumps, he usually lands on a 
stair. He tries to hit the crouch button the second he's in the air. So when he lands, he slides up and it gets him some really nice momentum. Also, it's harder for the enemy to shoot you nonetheless. So you could constantly keep doing this as you rotate and as long as you tap the crouch in the air and it makes it super easy to run around the map. So we all know you never lose momentum when you slide through doors. So two quick things. One scenario I'm thinking about is when you're landing and someone can test you at the front door of a building. You slide through and you will get to wherever you need to be to get the gun first. Also, what I saw Jiven doing in his sliding tutorial, if you haven't watched that, you definitely should. He gets walls on people in a box and he slides through, creates a door and gets this crazy little peek to get some chip damage shots. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how people utilize the sliding through doors technique because it's very optimal. More advanced sliders will set it up just like this. Once again, shout out to Raider for this. First day this came out, he was showing us how to slide down an elevation while being protected. Man's a menace. In slow-mo, you do the four tile edit, place stairs up and down and just continue going until you don't want to do it anymore. Although this is very cool and it has a very specific use, I'm not sure how useful it's actually going to be, but something you do want to practice nonetheless. Here's a little rotation movement strategy that lots of people in chapter three have already been utilizing and it's like the old EJ dash from back in the day. So you could set it up in one of two ways, one by using the stair and then flipping it and sliding down or a more realistic way is to use cones and then you get the little momentum boost as you go on the bottom of it. You could hop in between the cones, but I don't really like doing that. Instead, what I do is just time my crouch. When I land, I crouch up and then get ready to do it again so I can hit more cones back to back to back. I saw Nick A30 trying to do this one day on stream while he was jumping. In my opinion, it's way harder this way. If you're an OG, just like Razor X was, you know he's got some nostalgia watching this. Sliding will take some getting used to, but one thing you need to be aware about is learning how to cancel your slide. You can jump out of sliding by hitting your jump button, or you could just crouch up and it will stop the whole animation. If you're struggling with peace controlling and all that, you need to be very good at getting out of sliding by pressing crouch. Or if you don't know, if you move backwards at any point in time while sliding, it will instantly bring you to a stop. Okay, so here we go. The tents are now in Fortnite, but there's one thing that people aren't really mentioning. They only have 125 HP and now there was an update. It used to do three damage per tick in the zone. Now it does 25 damage per tick. So that means that you can have five seconds to try and heal up before the tent is completely destroyed. And when you're in them, they'll heal you at five HP per second, but the health of the tent will also be ticked. Also, they did patch it to where you can chop out the builds and the tent will still be floating. If you're down bad in the zone, you could hypothetically get around four seconds of healing in the tent. So yes, I talked about this earlier, but this is the best way to attack a box fight in chapter three. As you're box fighting them, look to always set up the cone play and then slide right in. This is a strat that I will almost guarantee that pros are going to master and they're going to demolish everyone. The faster you can get used to this strat right here, the better you're going to be able to finish fights really fast. Not a single gun in the game can one shot you anymore. The max damage a gray sniper can do to the head is 162. Green being 172 and the blue is 180. The purple is 190 and the gold is 198. Very commonly, you could be 150 HP. You will die to a headshot with any sniper. Let me tell you, chapter three, hard mats more than ever this season are going to be the most useful in this spray meta. Building out of wood, especially in team modes, is going to be a death sentence if you're caught lacking. If you're absolutely brand new to chapter three and you haven't realized it yet, shaking players to reveal where their teammates are are no longer in the game. The only thing you can do to down bodies now is carry them around. So I'm not really sure if this is just a me thing, but consumables have been spawning all around the map. Keep your eyes peeled for almost anything around the map. There's more lunch boxes, more slurp barrels, more fishing spots, tons of ways to heal, and definitely something I noticed in chapter three. Speaking of healing, here's why you always loot the random coolers around the map. It's guaranteed heals, and make sure when you do see these things that you just smack them once with your pickaxe and don't search them. It's way faster. Most of the time you get the jingle juice, whatever the hell it's called, but usually it always comes with chug splash. In my opinion, this is one of the dopest things about the new chapter I really like. Here's a two for one tip because apparently this first thing has been in the game for a really long time and I just wasn't aware. There's a strat on the game right now where you use the missiles to boost the back of your boat and get more momentum going forward. What happens though, if you end up hitting yourself with this missile, you will take 35 damage. I did not know that, but it's still possible not to lose health and still use this thing correctly. Second thing, there's some leaks going around about dual hand cannons. Whether it's actually coming out or not, it's actually really cool to see how Fortnite is adding a lot of new guns to the game or even customizing old old guns to be different. Keep your eyes peeled for some amazing content. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying the video so far. Also, YouTube doesn't like when I say this word. So if you do know where I stream, the link is going to be down below. We're going to lose our channel. So we got to be quiet. One of my friends, Liquid, who also creates content, he recently put me onto this. And I don't know if Tilted Towers was like this when the chapter first released. Tilted Towers is one of the best places to get loot. There is crazy amounts of chest spawns there. Liquid said in my stream that there was around 46 chest spawns at Tilted Towers right now. Granted, I don't know if we could see every single one of them, but there's a lot there, especially because it's not a name POI at the time of making this video. 
You might not think it's worth landing there, but I promise you at least give it one chance. Depending on when you watch this, so it could be a little different depending on how much of Tilted Towers is exposed. Even with the nerf, you could still do this one strat with the sniper and the MK7 or even SMG. One person sprays the wall while the other lines up a snipe shot. Back in the day, this was one of the best ways to get a knock in Fortnite, and I still think there's some potential here in Chapter 3 to use this meta. So at this very moment, people are using SMGs like an AR. The range on these things are crazy, but I still think it's meta to carry around an AR. It's likely or possible that we could see a nerf to SMGs in the future, and if we do, you do want to be used to using an AR already at that point. Balancing it out as you play the game throughout the day is definitely something that you should be doing so that you could get used to the meta in the future. One thing you probably didn't know this season was that you reboot twice as fast with two people and three times as fast as three people, but you can also apply that same thing when trying to open up a safe in Fortnite as well. So it's kind of like anything that's added to Fortnite, when there's more people on it, it's going to be faster no matter what it is. Just in general, reboots this chapter are way louder than previous seasons. As a solo, you have to be extra careful because like I said, the reboot takes longer, which means people are going to be swan taunting you the second they hear a pin drop. So if you reboot, you got to get them out of here. My friend Orin put me onto this. I'm not 100% true if it's factual, so I'm literally just throwing him under the bus right now. But he was telling me that you can heal vehicles faster with the campfires than previous chapters. Not the most useful thing to know in the world because rarely anyone will do this, but it's still good to know in case you're a returning player. If you play anything competitive on the game right now, every time the map changes, you want to be one of the first people to find a new drop. If you're the first person to learn that drop really well, you're going to have a complete edge on your opponents. That's the one thing in every season that will slip people's mind really fast. One cool little crazy thing I saw on Twitter the other day was that there's still a chance you can get the old pump in chapter three. Those vending machines for 100 gold that spawn random items, the pump is in there. Very cool to know, and if you want to get some gameplay with it, now's your time. There was a bunch of YouTubers like Nick830 doing this at the start of the chapter, and it was very cool to see. The Spider-Man emote is literally pay to win. Like I said, I've seen some other streamers and YouTubers using this, but it's super OP and can get you a nice kill. Don't 100% quote me on this, but I believe this is a new feature because boards are now dropping shields when you kill them. I have no idea where the shields might be coming from, but nonetheless, pretty cool if you do want some shrooms. They don't spawn the crazy shrooms though, just the normal ones. So around the vaults and around the foundation where that POI is, there's tons of NPCs. Not the ones that you interact with, but the ones that just guard the area. What I do whenever I'm landing near them is always kill them because at the beginning, there's a high chance you get a good AR and shields as well. You get three mini. They don't overpower you too much in this game unless your name is Colt. Who is on me, bro? Like, there's some dude on me. Are you out of your fucking... <laughs> In at the beginning of the chapter 3 launch, shotguns were terrible. A few days later, they increased the accuracy and the fire rate of the striker pump. I gotta say, it's hitting a lot harder now, and I'm definitely doing way better with it. At the beginning of the chapter, again, the auto shotgun used to take years to pull out as well, but it did receive a buff. But I'm very sure that the striker pump still has the fastest pull out and shoot time. I don't know if this is meta, but I don't ever use the auto shotties, and I'll always take a gray one over almost any rarity of an auto shotgun. I saw this before the new chapter, but I never talked about it. I don't know why this is a thing, but making side window edits, you'll notice a difference in the size of the window. By now in chapter three, you should be aware of that, but different materials with the same window edit have different sizes. It's very weird, and I know on performance mode, it looks different from DX11, but the center edit is always the same. Just for some reason, if you're box fighting someone, usually try to make a right or left window edit. It's a smaller peak. These things right here, I hate them. Chapter three, these things will light you on fire one second. All seriousness, be aware of these things because if you're too close to them, you'll take 15 damage, just like the normal fire. It makes the game more realistic, but I liked it better when I could walk on them and nothing happened. Leave a like or a comment if you agree. Do not be like me. I was very late to figuring this out. Definitely need to be aware about the fact that chests spawn inside wooden boxes just like this. With this tip, it should make you be able to loot way faster if you didn't know about it. Epic themselves has fixed it so you can now build on the big jumbo trees. In greasy groves, rocky reels, and other places around the map, there's still tons of spots you cannot build on. Building on trees though is now fixed. When someone sprays you with an SMG, this is how you counter it in the new chapter. Try to remember to never be in a position where you just have one wall separating you and the enemy. I say this in almost every video, but even though you're not thinking it, you're allowing the other player to get free hits on you because the bullets always bleed through, especially with the SMG. There's no nerf to these crazy guns yet, but even if you do see one, I'm sure that they'll most likely be able to spray through anyway. Chapter three, here's one of the best tips to be a good sniper. Start out with this easy one. Always pick the damn thing up. You practice in situations where it doesn't matter, so that way you get better with it over time. Try to focus on predicting 
predicting where they're going to be landing and the best time to shoot someone is as they're in the air they're jumping and the second they touch the ground like right before that transition that's when you take the shot you get better with each shot you take go be chris kyle and save the day you could slide through window edits and in this spot on a stair you can keep your momentum you always want to be aware about where you could slide because it will come in handy when you least expect it just like everything else on fortnite this is where the meta is going blah 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 if you suck at it then you're definitely going to suck later on in the future blah 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 this is the mind of any controller player especially back before chapter three especially with this medic keyboard or controller whenever i see someone reset a wall i always look to shoot not only will i shoot them but i'll also be trying to exploit in at the same time if i'm in front of their box or what i do is keep spraying my ammo just a little bit and as i get towards the end of the clip i look to break the wall and then claim it back one thing especially remember that every time you want someone to take their map out just start spraying them this forces them to build but if they're really cracked just be aware that they could pre-fire you everyone says not to double swing on walls well with this meta and sliding especially you can slide across their box and try and take it this makes it increasingly hard for them the box you figure out what's going on because you're just sliding right underneath them try to time it so if you don't get it you just keep sliding out of there the med mist is the new heal in fortnite and it's got to be the best white heal that ever touched the game in my opinion i've been starting to see people on twitter talk about what this thing would smell like seriously though it's very easy to heal while running and i always carry this thing over med kits even in duos and probably even in trios keep your eyes peeled for this heal because it's very good especially when you're box fighting and trying to maneuver in between multiple boxes to get heals off you need to practice sliding blah 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 you should be peace controlling while sliding we definitely know this though i think lots of people hyped up the sliding mechanic to the point where it's going to be changing in like a week just know when it comes to sliding you should be practicing while peace controlling obviously go out of your way to always implement this into your games as you're playing and something that's not that serious so over time you'll get really good at it hop on the train as early as you can start practicing in the edit maps is my main point but nonetheless i don't think like jive and tv said we're not going to be seeing this in comp for a really long time until people are really adjusted to it i'd actually don't do pub tips that often but what people started doing was storing the mythic in tents for next game so how it works is the first two guns that you store in there are free but if you want to store a third one it costs around 100 gold in case you don't know tents are not in arena approaching the end here's two retakes that you should be using in chapter three to keep up with the meta i use this in arena realistics you name it number one is doing this where you put the cones above your double ramp just like this you high wall up then you edit the stair and continue whatever you're doing shout out to jivin because he really made me aware of this and made me start doing it more and more he took my cats hostage and made me do it i swear the last one is doing stairs and walls as you ramp and edit out the sides or even better you use a cone you high wall up for a similar type of retake i practice these a lot and it's a super useful protective high ground retake the biggest struggle in chapter three season one is learning all the campfire spots again i'm sure others can relate to this but every time i find a campfire spot i make a mental note so i can remember it throughout the time i'm playing fortnite that's about the only way i get used to them because i am not going into replays or i'm not going into any fortnite map gg and studying campfires you got me effed up i asked my subscribers for tips but this was one funny one that i saw someone post had to add it this guy said chapter three hack carry a purple or gold shotgun drop it for your opponent when box fighting use a gray smg to outgun them this was before the buff they made but it was still funny i substituted out these two tips but i'm low-key just going to tell you them real quick this was supposed to be in the number two spot but there's a total of seven volts in chapter three you do need a duo to open it but you can use chickens knocked henchmen or even a shark as a solo to open it i don't have a clip of a shark but i heard this works from someone in the comment section and also i want to see if it works with a down body on fortnite if you get a kill and you go to open up the vault from what i've seen the loot is not too crazy but it's still better than other drop spots by far like i said seven volts but there also could be rifts around there as well to rotate spider webs around the map are super unique and they spawn the mythic web shooters every time you see those webs there's usually a web shooter nearby the main place you're gonna find these cool looking web shooters that people are posting everywhere is at the daily bugle i hope i'm saying that right bugle there's five that spawn there and all you need to do is find the thing on the wall it looks like this you pick it up you interact and now you can fly very simple exciting thing that fortnite added i love this i gotta get an exclamation point on this number tip 69 ken beans troll clown emoji yeah you name it all i ask for this tip consider using code ken beans in the item shop and if you like this sweatshirt the link's gonna be down below very comfortable i have to pay for these myself i do get them at a discount obviously but i wouldn't buy four or three of them if i didn't like them also i know this is low-key pay to win but i do answer the people who use my code and send me proof i like to say thank you living with a heart do something 69 tips and tricks for the new chapter i have seven other episodes of 100 tips and tricks i'm gonna leave the latest one which is the most important one for build fighting first link in the description out of all the 100 tip videos that one's performing the worst but i promise you it's one of the best like i said on screen now and in the description drop a like if you like the 69 tips but please comment one bad thing about this video because i'm trying to learn from my community feedback is one of the most important ways to improve on youtube i promise you feel free to say whatever you're not gonna hurt my feelings i got a thick head a lot of people tell me that
that. I'll see you next time. I'll talk to you in the next video. Deuces. Peace.